good day. There was much in the news this week with the meeting of uh, the supreme body of the country's uh, magistracy at Unity Palace. There was also a series of uh, audiences which the president of the republic granted at Unity Palace. But the back in the neighborhoods or in our towns, news again came down from the northwest and came up from the southwest as church leaders were taken to court this week and the, the case was postponed. Ojong Stevens, the publisher of the media newspaper, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. That um, uh, cherished Professor Emeritus Nkui, or Paul Nkui, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice which you made by traveling all the way from Bamenda to be with us on the program this midday. That's mm -hmm. Uh, our own Tewil Abif, you're welcome. Thank you, Jay. And of course, um, uh, one which who will you you get him up at midnight. He's prepared to respond <laughs> to our request, and I'm referring to Professor Elvis Ngolengole. You're welcome, also. Great pleasure, always. And uh, I like us to set the ball rolling with uh, a review of what the papers were feeding on this week. Our <coughs> person, Larry Efande. <laughs> The head of state president Paul Beer was at the forefront of a number of activities this week. Notably, the audiences at the Unity Palace, the much awaited higher judicial council, which led to mass movements and appointments. But these didn't eclipse the running story, which has been feeding the press for over six months the Anglophone crisis, plus the death of veteran sports journalist Zakaw Nkwo. All this animated the papers this week. Let's begin by reading through the National Bilingual Daily Cameroon Tribune Wednesday. It captures that two audiences at the Unity Palace, notably the CEO of Electricity de France, Jean Bernard Levy. The paper says the national project was the center of talks between the two, while the transfer of technologies to young Cameroonians came to play when the vice president of Huawei Group, Lee Dafen, met same Wednesday with President Beer. A day before the paper reports on the partnership for security and the fight against maritime piracy along the Gulf of Guinea was the focus of Russian ambassador Nikolai Ratsiborinsky's visit to the Unity Palace. Well, it finally held the much-awaited ordinary session of the Higher Judicial Council. The supreme body which handles the careers of magistrates and higher judicial officials, Cameron Tribune Thursday writes, the body examined seven disciplinary cases, an examination which led to the integration, the promotion and transfer of magistrates. The Guardian Post dedicates its Friday's edition to the entire text. The Anglophone crisis featured strongly on the papers this week. The Guardian Post Wednesday says over 70 detainees at the Yangle Central Prison arrested in the wake of the ongoing Anglophone crisis have embarked on an indefinite hunger strike. A decision which read over the countenance of Mancho Bibixi in court Wednesday, the paper says. Meantime, the court rejected an application requesting the detained leaders to be released and placed under judicial supervision, the paper adds. This as a son of the detained Advocate General of the Supreme Court, Justice Ayapola Bine, was on June 7 arrested at the premises of the Yaoundé Military Tribunal. There was some print media space for the church this week. Church leaders in the northwest and southwest regions were expected in court Monday. The Garden Post used their reports on the huge Christian turnout at the court, despite security presence. The paper, like the Rambler, the Horizon, pictured the moderate of the piece to see while addressing the Christians in Boyer. The Rambler intimated a change of rostrum for the clerics as it banners it as bishop in the dock. It went ahead to say the consortium of parents avoids the bishop's trial. The garden post on this center spread captures the drama in pictures. We read some more about the church. The Voice newspaper talks about the death of three Catholic priests in three weeks. Reporting on the death of Bishop Benoit Bala, the Horizon newspaper says police rule out suicide after remains of the prelate was pulled out of the Sanaga River. Quoting a similar police investigation, the Garden Post Monday says the bishop might have been assassinated. The announced death of a sports journalist, Zachary Nko, runs from the post through the Guardian Post and the media newspapers. Most of these papers write on the sports legacy of the man who quit live stage at 69. 
And finally, the ordinary and advanced levels of the GC examination begins tomorrow, Monday. Well, that ends our first review. I'll come your way again next week. God willing. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Larry. I'd like us to begin with um, this match of yesterday, which the press uh, could not capture. Um, the Lions, um, or I'll put it this way, Hogo Bruce gambled and won again. Mm. No, uh, uh, I, I don't think he gambled. He has, when he came, we, we, he had not proven his method, but now we're beginning to see that uh, he is worth the trouble. He's a good coach. We see a Lions team that is very cohesive. Even though they lack, they are a bit lacking uh, up front, but at the defense they are formidable. At the de at the midfield they are formidable. I think with time we will have a very wonderful team. I think he's doing a good job. We cannot say he was gone. He gambled. Okay, yeah. I like us to end that one at that level and move on to Prof, who is coming all the way from Bermuda. How would you assess the uh, readiness or the build up to the general certificate of education examinations beginning Monday? <laughs> I think I'm. Um, that's, uh, I'm the wrong person to respond to that kind of a question. Okay. I was asking because you are from Bermuda, maybe. Simply, uh, well, <laughs> given the fact that um, we are on the sidelines, because we have not been teaching, and those going on to do the GC were probably students not taught by us. And if I say us, I mean those of us who, have the, who are teachers and who have not been active in the transmission of knowledge. Some, virtually I can say 80% of our schools were, were closed, were not active. But the students have decided to meet the challenge all the same. Well, there are a few students who continue to go to school and um, probably is for it is for those that the GCE board is organizing this exam, which I feel is not worth the salt. Okay, Tewi. Um, government says all the measures have been taken, including the GCE board. Um, and the accounting on the goodwill of everybody who wants to take the exams to go there. Well, well, government may have taken all the necessary measures, but I still think there is a problem of security. When I look at the incident that happened in Bermuda last week, where a young student's <coughs> arm was cut, then I begin to ask myself, where is the security? It wasn't within the school compound, but besides Security the school compound, in a bush holistic. somewhere. Security is holistic. When you take care of students, mm -hmm. you don't Children. only ensure the security of our otherwise schools will just be buildings. It is taking into consideration the security of all the stakeholders, of <coughs> all those involved in education. Mm -hmm. Protecting the students is <coughs> very important. And, uh, and I don't think the protection of students begins and ends within the school premises. So when there, when there are incidents like this, we begin to wonder whether the security can really be said to be effective. Now, would the, would the, one would ask the question, Prof, would the threats and so on coming on the social media and government uh, assuring uh, the, the students, uh, like I was asking Tewi, and uh, how would you put that side by side? Would, uh, g given the incident which Tewi has just mentioned and uh, the very fact that uh, uh, the government uh, says the issue should go ahead. Yeah, the government is within its uh, regalian duty to, to manage, to organize and manage uh, education uh, in the country. Uh, the challenges notwithstanding, I, I understand uh, the security challenges and uh, the challenge that, uh, as uh, Prof, my elder brother said earlier, uh, <coughs> a lot of the schools were not open. Mm -hmm. And uh, but, as we say, what we we learn from this 
the, 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 the crisis in the two um, English speaking uh, regions is that at least the young people, the mm -hmm. students, took the challenge and said uh, we want to go to some, uh, we want to go to school, we want to have an education and in spite of the problems we're going to take the risks and we're going to take on those challenges and the government in its regalian duty has supported, has encouraged and has put in place the right or what it considers the right security and other infrastructure to ensure that these students who have taken up that challenge don't get disappointed. As to how they will perform, of course, we watch and we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see but that nevertheless, uh, the sec security is a challenge, and the fact that uh, a good number uh, wasn't going to school is another challenge. Now, perhaps uh, there is a genius in, in some Cameroonian students. We'll see. Uh, as they say, possibly never Cameroonian. But we think that lots of the students and some of the teachers. Uh, uh, took the challenge and uh, they were doing classes in maybe unorthodox, private or informal ways and uh, we, we have to say that in our moral duty as citizens to encourage the younger people and young people to grow up and be like us, we have to feel sorry and hope that uh, things will be better. Let these students learn and go to school because they are the leaders of tomorrow and they cannot lead without knowledge. They cannot lead without uh, certificates. We hope that uh, uh, the certificates uh, will reflect the knowledge that they acquired through formal or informal uh, uh, yes, settings. Okay. Um, let, uh, let me interject there because um, uh, goes down for school is not new as far as I'm concerned. Because in 58 we declared ghost towns for schools. In 1958? 58, I was in Sunat 6. It lasted for a couple of days and the schools were open. Some of us were able to go back to school. But the security we had was the willingness of our parents. The parents uh, who send their kids to school and the parents who didn't send their, school, their kids to school not to disrupt the process that was ongoing in giving the kids the knowledge. I was a victim and I went to school. We were in a class of about 50, senior six old boys. The neighboring school had the same number. And when the, 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 the crisis reached its peak, we collapsed from 100 and something kids <coughs> to about 20 something, right? But we, oh, those of us who could go went. The good thing about it is that we covered the syllables. But the bad thing with this is that we are organizing an uh, um, an examination. An examination on a syllables whose coverage is put in doubt. I think that is the most fundamental thing. And I'm wondering whether we are not deceiving these young men, whether their certificates will be respected abroad. Uh, th that's, that's another question, but the point here is that the, the minister has indicated that they've taken a series of measures and that the students were supposed to read ahead. They know what they're supposed to cover and uh, maybe compare notes with those who, who were working. Joe, if yes, I, if I may, uh, I'll, I'll give you. Uh, uh -huh. um, we are in, a, a, in an education system that is national in nature. Part of the country, the syllabus might not have been covered. And in another part of the country, the syllabus was covered because it's okay. English speaking in the in English speaking schools in the in the in the in the eight regions mm -hmm. they were going to school. So the dilemma here is: Would you sacrifice those who were going to school who covered the syllabus and promote, or would you also abandon? those who did not go to school. I think, humbly, that those who weren't going to school could have been given the opportunity to catch up 
How? The students were at home. Why did they not push the academic year later? They were not, go they were not going to school. It might have been considered a holiday. Why couldn't the academic year be pushed, let's say, to August? Okay, that's another right. question yeah. because um, yeah, to, to cover the we, we, we will be talking about the build up to two thousand the two thousand and eighteen academic year, yeah. and so there are still question marks okay. uh, and uh, around that. So I just wanted us to talk about uh, the, the the examinations, the written part of the examinations expected tomorrow. Uh, uh, Stephen hasn't said us anything on the you on the exams. Yeah, I just wanted to say that the <coughs> we understand the the. The, 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 the government's position, just like we understand the position of uh, the students. Uh, the, the worry I have is that, as somebody who was reaching the GC before, I understand that to see the GC, you must be psychologically prepared. You should be morally prepared, and you should be academically prepared for the, for the exam. There are times you see some your, your friends really frightened entering the GC hall. For students who have not been to school for seven months, are you sure they have this preparedness, psychological preparedness to sit for mm -hmm. an end of course exam like the GC? Take for instance the GC A levels with all the hurdles. You think that somebody who has a mathematics or physics student who has not done practicals for seven months will go and do physics practicals in the GC A levels? For someone like me who did it, I don't think it is, it is feasible. So okay, I, but uh, like they, they, like they have been doing it, all the same. That is where the, the, the problem lies. But we also understand government's position because it is the duty of government to make sure these uh, citizens are educated because mm -hmm. education is a fundamental human right. Mm -hmm. So that is the position of government. Mm -hmm. But this worries uh, where, the, where the dilemma lies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I tried in vain to get um, the GC board and also to get a trade unionist. Uh, the teachers trade union come so we talk about it but I'll still make frantic efforts to be able to get them talk and about here that you can register in Bamenda for a certain Bamenda and writing your own day I don't know how that's going to be workable mm -hmm. yeah, that you, things, might, you know, might not have registered those are decisions that were taken because of the because exceptional, exceptional circumstances, circumstances. Right. No, yeah. but we should not sacrifice mm -hmm. The quality of education. We will, we will, we will get the GC board. Uh, we'll get a representative of the board and of the ministry and the trade union is come and answer questions on this GC board on yeah. this particular 2017 I'm told edition of the Ministry of, of Education brought out some of these uh, measures to the, the GC board register raised some uh, reservations. Right? No, that, those are suppositions. We will get the, the GC board to answer those questions uh, within the next couple of. Of weeks here on the program. Yeah, yeah. What we should agree here is that, I mean, we are living in exceptional circumstances, and uh, exceptional circumstances call for exceptional measures. Uh, this is like what you refer to as a new norm. We, the government, as the organizer, the manager, and the promoter of national education, has that regalian duty. Okay. It will encourage and give education a chance. Mm. And we shall see whether our young people will be up to the task. Okay. Uh, I, I think that teachers, one of the joys of a teacher, and a good number of teachers here, is to say that, to see their students succeed. Succeed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. That's a running story. And one of the fallouts of uh, the ongoing Anglophone crisis has been the dragging of uh, church officials to court. And with uh, them being in court, it has raised a number of questions. And one of them which we want to answer today is the issue between the church and the state, church and politics. Let's have the speaker on what happened in Bamenda and Boya this week. Curious onlookers among whom members of Christian movements and associations crowd around Bamenda's Magistrate Court Number 1. The first session is the case between the Consortium of Parents with children in Christian mission schools in the Northwest and the Catholic Church with some of its school principals. The second court session pits the same consortium against the Cameron Baptist Convention. Members of the consortium of parents were all absent, just like their representative, Barrister Julius Achu, and they have brought seven count charges against the church, amongst which a failure to ask parents to send children back to school, collecting money as fees from parents while refusing to teach and accommodate children, 
failure to cause payment of salaries to mission school teachers, thus depriving the state of necessary tax deductions. The court has ordered the civil party to pay a deposit and register the direct summons before next session to hold on Monday, July 24, 2017. The three complainants representing a consortium of parents whose children were enrolled in Cali colleges in the southwest region for the 2016-2017 school year were all absent in court just like complainants of another consortium for parents with children in colleges of the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon. Although the presiding judge, Majesty Tuba Beatrice of the Boya Court of First Instance took notice of the late arrival of one of the lawyers representing complainants against the Catholic Church, she did not bow down to the motion made by Barrister Eta Bison Jr. asking for the case to be outrightly thrown out of court. The judge's ruling stated that the matter has been adjourned for the 24th of July 2017 for the complainants to produce the originals of the stamp summons, a deposit of 100,000 francs CFA for each of the cases, and for the complainants and their lawyers to be present in court. The Right Reverend Funky Samuel, moderator of the PCC, Bishop Emmanuel Bushio of the Boya Diocese, and Father Alexander Sub left after the matter was adjourned and were subsequently received by a huge crowd of Christians who had been denied entry into the court premises by anti-riot security forces. <clears throat> okay, I would... Should I say this is real drama unfolding in front of our <laughs> eyes? Drama indeed, it's real drama. It has hardly happened before in our country. It is uh, quite an interesting stage in, uh, in the, our drive to, to real um, uh, democracy and uh, living together in Cameroon. Okay. But um, the interesting thing is, <coughs> excuse me, the, the court in Bermenda and Boya would adjourn the cases to the same day, they're almost falling, it's as if they were concerting. Uh, th this is where everybody feels our government has a hand. <laughs> Not only, I can tell you that before I went to court, I was in court in Bafinda. Were you one of the... And I witnessed, yes. No, I wasn't one. I'm a parent, okay. but I'm not in the consortium. Because okay. I understand what the role of the parent is. What I'm saying is that why these are two separate cases. They were all on the same day, right? Why on the same day are not drawn to the same date? And it's not the first time. It's not probably the first time. Let's come to the summons. Probably the when the lawyer representing the person, the 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 lawyer who could not be in court said they will come back and modify their summons if you modify your original summons by dragging the bishops to court it's going to be a totally new case and if i were the judge in that time in the court that took place a few days ago i would have dismissed the case Unfortunately, we were in the, the George, <laughs> uh, but l let me l let, let me, me ask. let me continue because yes. I said you would have dismissed it. The guy comes to court and says we are going to modify our summons. It's no, not going to no, be it the is same. left for the magistrate to accept or not to accept. So they, they will that the magistrate explains would, would, would tell you. precisely mm -hmm. why we think that government has a hand. Okay, that's your thinking. <laughs> now, uh, but what the interesting thing about what is happening, we, I don't want us to transform ourselves into uh, a court here, but to pick the intricacies of what we observe as uh, keen observers of national life. And it has to <coughs> do with um, uh, the very fact that in Boya and Bermenda, those who took themselves, uh, so who wanted to act on behalf of uh, parents said the consortium did not present not themselves in Bermenda, nor did they come to Boya, uh, to the court in Boya. So how would you link uh, those, uh, that type of attitude? Well, it, it, it simply... That is contempt of court. Uh, I used to hear something <laughs> like that. <laughs> no, but, but they were represented. They might, have, not, they might not have been there physically, physically. Mm -hmm. but they were represented all the same. And, 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 and the, the two magistrates said they would want to see them 
in person next when they meet on the 24th of July as, as from what we, we follow yes but just to say Joe that the you can be represented by your lawyers, your counsel, yeah. by your counsel yes you can what is surprising here is how can you have a case you take it to court you are concerned and then you can't be there not even one Once. when they talk none when they talk of a consortium it is a it means a group of many people mm -hmm. who 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 are those <laughs> members of the consortium, the consortium. okay now uh, th that question I'm, we I'm cannot still, answer I'm, I'm still <laughs> that question we can't answer ex <laughs> except the consortium is it. not something abstract it is a grouping of individuals and people who have put themselves in association mm -hmm. and a number of associations that have been brought together will form a consortium right so who then are those who are members of these associations who have formed the consortium okay uh, so now uh, maybe the question I might ask him we don't have any uh, legal student here would be that um, is the consortium legally con constituted that mm. uh, we don't know either and yeah. i wonder whether you'd uh, you'd want to risk to double into that well I, I, that's a purely legal question uh, as to whether or not it's legally constituted if it is not legally constituted uh, my take is that in this whole episode of uh, this consortium taking these <coughs> church leaders to court we have to see this from the perspective that uh, we live in a country where not only do we believe in the rule of law, but we uh, would like to see the rule of law practice. That means that uh, we have to believe in the law itself that permits each and every one of us to behave, to seek, the way, to seek redress, to seek justice, and to ask the law, uh, those who dispense the law, to, 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 to satisfy you in whatever uh, case you make against someone else in this particular case if the the members of the consortium are not legally constituted obviously the court has as an institution uh, <coughs> has the expertise these men and women of the court are legal luminaries they are men and women uh, who know the law very well and they are not uh, people who are jokers they are profession they, they, they are faithful to their profession and i believe that they have a professional conscience they know exactly uh, what to do when if, the time will come when the time will come whether it's constitutional or not secondly um, we have to uh, we have to as citizens of a country that uh, we believe uh, should and practice uh, the rule of law we have to believe that if the members of this uh, consortium are legally constituted or not they the have court, a right as to an institution they have a right yes to, they, to might, not be, they, case, not, they yeah. might not be right uh, in, in 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 what they are doing but that's left for the court to as determine. an institution to determine but they, they have, have a right, right to, to go to the court to, to go to the court okay uh, that does not mean that they are right they, or they will be right at the end of the day okay but we have to believe that these courts our courts are institutions uh, and there are temples that are supposed to dispense justice according to the law we ourselves might not know the law as they do but they are professionals they they they, they, they were appointed they, they, they opted to go into that profession and i believe that they will do their job with all the professional conscience that there is okay but for, my, just my to correct the brother, my brother, yes. brother yes. It, it, we should go on record that in spite of <coughs> suspicions and so forth the government is not a party to to this case and the government has not indicated anywhere that it has an interest in being a party to this case never nonetheless uh, the government in a country where the rule of law prevails cannot be seen to stop justice from uh, taking, its the, course. taking its course i mean otherwise no, the, big, the big question uh, my brother we is have to believe in the rule of law i mean uh, my, the big question in all is okay. what law did the bishops or the church leaders break 
Okay, that the courts will determine. Okay, no, I, I like no, us. No, no, no that the, the, the courts will determine. No, we Somebody. are not. We, we shouldn't transform ourselves into uh, into the. Uh, we shouldn't sit here in the place of a court. They will determine that, and when they determine that, we'll be able to come back here and do the analysis anyway. as what the law says. But for now, um, just the very fact that church leaders went to court is what has brought us around this table today. And uh, I, 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 I want. There are so b before even this incident, there were a, a number of write-ups calling on the church to stay out of politics, calling on because the bishops did a pastoral letter to the president of the republic. Am I right? Yes. Okay. And so uh, that's why I wanted us to discuss. So, what is the role of a state in trying to shape national life? Of the church? Of the, no, of a state within the, the church. The, 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 the state as a whole mm -hmm. to, to shape national. It has, like Prof was saying. Yeah. The role of a state, it's a regalian role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the state is in place, uh, and by state you mean the ensemble of institutions. Exactly. Be the institutions of decision making, meaning government, or institutions of uh, articulation of issues, uh, mobilization of people, animation of people, because there are all kinds of institutions in a Within human society. State, yeah. The laws in place. And the people who are animating these institutions are all, and the people who are just in the street in the streets on a <coughs> given territory. That is what we call the state. And the state has a regular duty to ensure that whatever it does, it does it in the general interest. You know, that which is designed to satisfy the general the general the, the, the general, the general public. As they say in the American uh, political language, the, 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 the greatest majority what is he who does the greatest good to the greatest majority is the state. And the state does it as a day-to-day, -day, uh, not only sacrament, but mission and vocation. Okay. To ensure that whatever it does on a given basis, it's intended to satisfy the general interests of the people. Okay. And the state, what it does as, 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 a, as a mission which is known, is ensure that people... Um, people um exercise exercise their their, their freedom within to, to, the, yeah, the within the limits of the, of the laws and the freedoms that they've got to issue and present their problems their frustrations organizations and other institutions are there to articulate these problems and so forth and there are institutions in place state institutions to dispense the rules, the laws, and other decisions that are designed to satisfy the people. Okay. If they don't satisfy the people, the people still have the right to, to keep on asking and okay. to complain. Now, um, uh, one of the things which the state allows to function within that state is religious bodies. Yes. And what is the role of when the, the, when the state is allowing a religious body to function, what is, this, what is that, that role it gives it? Yeah, the religious bodies in a, in a, in a, in a, in, in a, in a society such as ours are uh, among those private non-state bodies or institutions that are there with a different vocation uh, in, the, in the case of religious bodies their vocation is to inspire you and I to make sure that you and I understand the meaning of God and who God is and to bring us closer to God so that we can be exemplary citizens citizens of faith in a God and citizens who on their day-to-day -day basis whether we're in public or in private, we do things in accordance with our faith that has been inspired by those religious, by those religious bodies. Okay. But religious bodies are not the only ones who do this because uh, parents also do these and, uh, and, and schools also do these and other agents in society. But these religious bodies, in doing this, first of all, they are a grouping of citizens. They are also citizens who make up the religious bodies. But the church... As, as, as a religious as institution, entity. as an institution, has a, a duty, has a vocation, has a mission to express itself, to issue its, its position, but not to replace or, 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 or become, as the Pope, Pope Benedict and even Pope John Paul II said, they cannot replace political parties because the church's okay. vocation is not political. All right. I see from your facial um, expressions that you keep in disagreement. I, I, not in disagreement, yeah. but in, to compliment. Okay. Uh, to say that the involvement of the church in politics is at three levels. 
one the articulation of its social teaching two the discussions arising from the church's involvement in schools in hospitals and in welfare three the debate over particular moral issues in the society I take the example of the Catholic Church which I happen to know very well historically the church has been involved and accepted it is not an unwelcomed party in politics okay because of these three articulations and the first one which concerns its social teaching came in a number of encyclicals one was done in 1891 by Pope Leo the okay Leo the eighth Leo the thirteenth thirteen Leo the thirteenth Leo the thirteenth thanks for the cor correction mm -hmm. and it underscored the role of the church the church cannot afford to be indifferent to issues that have to do with exactly. the society it okay. is what they call social teaching okay so you've, so you've articulated i'll come back to you but there is this relationship between the state and the church which is being put to question at given intervals and in given settings and we have come to realize that that has happened within our own setting that's the communion setting so what should be the relationship between the church and the state if you go back to saint augustine probably is the first uh, time where there is really philosophical debate on the concept of the separation of church and state and in his book the city of god he makes a very clear distinction between the city of God which is heavenly and the earthly kingdom over which we mortals preside and that this earthly kingdom that we preside you and I as politicians really should be a preparation for that city of God and the failure to do that is is actually failing to do our duties and who are these people in this earthly kingdom? We, the politicians. The church is itself who have a moral duty to protect, lead, teach and act to protect their Christians. And therefore it is when we talk about the church's separation is simply in the language of Sarkozy who went further to define what li uh, laicity of the state in France were, is that simply, Sarkozy will simply say, it is impossible for the French state to continue to exclude the role the church ought to play in the promotion of French culture, in the promotion of French history and society. Therefore, when we talk about the separation of state, it is virtually impossible for the state to act as if the church did not exist. The Catholic bishops of the Baminda Episcopal Conference wrote a confidential letter to the head of state. Ex analyzing the challenges, the problems, etc., etc., that has led to the crisis. And if you read their last paragraph, they give the head of state an opening to be able to intervene and probably end the crisis. They did that. It was part of their moral authority. Okay. Now, when you say what you say, uh, there, would, there are people who question that this church is not supposed to involve itself in politics and that they should allow politics to politicians and concern themselves with the moral upbringing of the people. Well, I, 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 let I, me I come see. before he steps up because this is, that dates back to the, to the 16th century. 
where the Anabaptists, after the Reformation, did not want people to vote. They did not want people to vote, to participate in politics, and even to be involved in politics at all. So that trend still exists. Okay. That, uh, yeah, uh, I happen uh, to be a Baptist. And I was no, really, but, but you are not an Anabaptist. But we, we <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've, no, I've, 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 I've not done a theological history, so I will limit myself to my experience in Cameroon. Yeah. Uh, I understand that the, the church is somehow separate from the from the state, but I think another reasoning, the two are mutually inclusive. Uh, the church cannot exist. The church exists in the state. And the church is affected by decisions taken by political actors. Mm -hmm. So you cannot take mute when ac actions taken by the authorities affect you. And when the, uh, the actions taken are um, disaffecting you, they ask you to stay quiet. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying in other words is that I may just paraphrase him, uh, Professor Ali Majuri who said, anybody who sits quiet in the face of injustice is guilty of uh, moral decadence and intellectual dishonesty. So you don't expect... The church advocates that too. Yes. The Bible. I'm you don't expect the church to sit quiet when the church feels that what the state is doing, what the politicians, the leaders of the state are doing is not correct. It doesn't affect them correctly. So the church has a right as moral authorities, as stakeholders in the running of the, the, the politics of the country, as, uh, as keen observers of the, the of what happens to the country, mm -hmm. to also come in, and this is not the first time that the the, the church is coming in. You recall that uh, in the ni early 1990s, when uh, we, in the late 80s and early 1990s, when we had uh, a, a crippling uh, uh, economic crisis, the same Catholic Church uh, held the a meeting of the Episcopal mm -hmm. conference, 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 and they issued a pastoral pastoral letter. At the time, uh, uh, Karina, Karina Tumi was the president of the Episcopal Conference, condemning the, the state for corruption and mm -hmm. mismanaging the state mm -hmm. to the extent that the, the coffers of the state were, were empty. Karina Tumi even had to travel from Garwa, where he was bishop, to Yaoundé and call the press conference to explain the pastoral letter to the, to, to the public. But there you saw that there was still politics in the church because some, some church leaders, like the bishop of Yaoundé, uh, Exonerated himself from the, 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 the declarations of the president okay. of the uh, Episcopal <laughs> Conference. Okay. And I can also go to South Africa with some people like uh, Desmond Bishop Tutu. Desmond Tutu, who was actively involved in the fight against apartheid. Really? Yeah. In our country, we see even the, our, our you, head of state recognizes the church. Yeah. The late um, uh, president of the National Communication Council is, was a bishop. The president of the Republic appointed him to head that. The president of the Anti Corruption Commission. It's a church man, it's a leader of the church. The head of state appointed him to. Even the, the commission on multilingualism and multiculturalism, there is a church man inside the Abbey who was Bodo. appointed by the. Which means that the president recognizes the fact that the church has a role to play, the church has an opinion to give in matters of, uh, of, of politics. Okay. Uh, you want to pick from there? Or no, uh, I just wanted to say that sometimes we, we, we talk and say those church leaders are not citizens. As citizens, they have a right to express their opinion on the way this country has been run. Okay. And leave the politicians to do their work. To do the running. To do the running. Okay. Nobody, now, uh, but what will the church do for, uh, this, uh, for people or keen observers to say the church is involving it, itself in politics? Uh, if you give me the floor, yes, I'd take that I one. can tell you that those bishops who took government positions, do you know why they did that? In a true Catholic situation, they should not be in there. As because bishops? they tie their hands, whether as bishop or priest. Yeah. Because the basic Catholic teaching, and according to, to the social teachings of the church, we should train Catholics, form them, make them morally strong to be able to pick up and run rather than we the priests and bishops being in there okay the two bishops one bishop is in, in, in i think he has left in yeah, the, 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 the other one was in telecommunication council, council. Yeah. it's not right 
it is not right. But that, and I can tell but, you, but as individuals, do they not even as that? individuals? Is that, is that, is become, that, is that what the church will lose your moral authority for the state to respect you? Okay. Yeah. See, all right. I mean, the no, party, right. the, the, yeah. make just to complement what, uh, yes. uh, as you know, brother, my prophet said, look, no one in a, whether you are, you are in a, in a, in a, in a, what do you call it, in a, in a, in a, in a secular state or mm. not, mm. no one quarrels with the, the, the moral position of the church and the moral right uh, of the church to state present issue its uh, its position on uh, on public issues or public matters. Yes. I yes. think that uh, as yes. also once said earlier, the church operates within a state, and the state is the earthly city or the earthly kingdom. Yes. Prophet yes. said earlier, and I think even the, the the godly angels of the godly city understand and recognize the earthly <laughs> kingdom and Caesar's kingdom. What is all about? What is the challenge for all of us who are in this earthly kingdom is to say that while the church as one of the institutions that has this vocation, mission uh, to, 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 to dispense uh, moral values and, and inspire us and strengthen our faith, while the church does its job, we who are the practitioners of the public matters in this <laughs> earthly kingdom, which we call the Cité or uh, mm -hmm. the Ethnic Kingdom, the Ethnic kingdom mm -hmm. is to make sure that we conduct ourselves in ways that do not betray our faith, our integrity as faith driven and morally driven persons, so that that Ethnic Kingdom is actually uh, reflects the ideal that the the, 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 the the godly kingdom is supposed to have is supposed to have us so that we prepare ourselves better. That is the challenge of a, a daily basis and that is why in his rebellion mission the state made up of you and I who are the earthly practitioners uh, continuously tries to make sure that it tends towards that general interest. That interest has to do with justice that has to do with equity. That has to do with trying to keep errors to the barest minimum. And if there's something wrong, it is not only the church that has a, a moral duty to state a position and say, oh, we don't like this or this is wrong. But even parents, even schools, even you journalists do it. Yeah. Anyone can do it because we all have a common duty. We and the church, especially those of us who are yes. children who are born out of the church, we have a duty to make sure that... The, the, the point here is that um, we go to church... But our attitudes do not reflect that churchness in us. Which they should. We, we, when we are out yeah. of the church setting and right. carrying out secular responsibilities. That is the folly of human behavior in in this, in this, in, on this earth. That there's a tendency for us to think that once we leave church, we are a little bit free to do free. what we want to do. But that shouldn't be the case. We are not going to do on our daily basis what the church asks us to do from word to by word. But... We are supposed to be inspired. For example, the, the moral teachings of the church say we must always do good. Do good towards others. Be good towards others. Meaning that if you are part of the state... Does you the are, state the, the, say the, otherwise? The state, is, the state says exactly the same thing. The state's regalian interest is to do good to the greatest majority. That's what we call... And to do justice. Political, well. And to do justice. To and be that fair. is what is called to be and, fair to everyone. And that's, that's what, what it's, it's called general interest. And the state tends to do that. But whenever there is an instance or a reason for that not to be the case, individuals who are citizens, institutions or groups such as religious groups, churches, journalists and others have a right to state their position and when they do so, they, 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 they are doing so in the general interest to ensure that good prevails. Okay. Good so in everyone. other words, religious bodies or churches have a right to uh, question the management of the earthly kingdom. Just like they have the right so to to uh, encourage and to support if it's course. good. Of course, because they, yes, have, they, yes. have, they have a moral responsibility to pray for leaders. Pray for leaders to be good. Um, you yeah. have actually put your finger on, on that uh, memorandum of the of the bishops to the president. They have a right as citizens. They have a right 
as moral leaders to help those who govern our society, our civil society, to say, look, things are going wrong. We, as our moral leaders, we can only point them out to you. And lo and behold, they did it. And I believe strongly the reason why they're in court is that they did exactly what they had to do. Jomi, anyway, if I may that's just, an opinion. Uh, yes, uh, Tewi. There is uh, no, there is, before you ask the question, Joe, there is no debate over the moral authority of the church. No. In, there is no debate. What I think the problem is with uh, partisan politics, where, wh what is the political process? It, it is educating people to register, vote the government in and out. I think where the problem arises is when the church is seen to give orientation to people's political decisions. That is where the bone of contention is. What we're talking about here, nobody questions the moral authority <coughs> of the church. Okay. So no, the, the problem is the pulpit should not be a political platform for supporting this or this policy. No, okay. I disagree. Just, uh, I disagree uh, by saying Jews. this. Okay. The church has a moral authority. To tell who, we are to, debating to tell, it. To tell the no, Christians excuse who me, to because thou shall not kill is one of the is the sixth commandment. Yeah. If you go around killing people, <laughs> the church cannot sit down and say and not talk about it in the in the public. That's that's a moral issue. And that the a, killing could be in several forms. A government stands and say, I am for abortion across the board. The church has the duty to say no. Okay. Because. But the, no. the, but the government, the church okay. cannot no, also no, tell, what tell, saying, tell its followers. It, what I am vote, saying is vote, can vote, vote because political party X. Yeah. What no, I'm no, saying based on the platform. The pulpit, yeah, no. the pulpit Joe, is, is supposed to be a place where they teach the people exactly. by I telling do. them. Abortion good. is a sin. It and is a moral. Issue. It is okay. Yes. Go any government that stands for it, you cannot vote for it. They can say so. Okay. Now, uh, I, 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 I'll, run, I'll run a quick one. Uh, maybe you like I start with you. Uh, we're running out of uh, out of time. Um, with <coughs> excuse me, the church's involvement in politics. How far can the church go, or should the church go? Well, um, there is no limit to the church's involvement in politics. If you look at our constitution in the country, it doesn't even mention the church, which means that there's nothing that stops people of the church to intervene in matters of politics. If a church man comes out to do that, he wants to become a mayor of uh, a town, he wants to become a parliamentarian, there's nothing that stops him from becoming. Except he may want, he may have to, the church may compel him to, not the country, but the church may compel him to resign as a church man. Okay. A cardinal or a bishop can decide to. And on the other hand, even the, 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 the political leaders, you see our, our head of state, when, whenever he wins an election, he's sworn in. The first place he goes to the is the church. And in the church, he's recognized as the head of state. That's why he's given a separate seat in front of the church, away from the, from the other. No, so the, there's the, an ancestral relationship between the, 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 the relationship is not defined. Okay. That's why there's a problem, maybe. But there's so that relationship. Uh, that church, uh, where should it begin and where should it end? You see, like I'm saying, all church leaders are citizens and they have a right to enjoy the benefits created by the earthly cities. That's number one. Number two, they also have a right to criticize, criticize those who govern us. He quoted the pastoral letter, which is very strange, on corruption, which some bishops, and I don't want to say the Francophone bishop, didn't want to sign it. They simply told the president of the Episcopal, uh, say sign it. They refused to sign. Okay. What I'm trying to drive out. We are running what out of I'm time. What I'm trying to drive out, because mm -hmm. we're dealing with the church and state, is that the church, whether it is Catholic, Protestants, or whatever, has a duty to help the politicians 
to govern well. well. Okay. The church has a role to play. Yes. Okay. There is no, 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 no gain saying about that. And okay. the relationship the between the state and the church is a complementary one. Okay. They each need Thank each other. Thank you very much. It's a complementary one. It's a complementary one. They, 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 they each need uh, each, each other, other well. to be able to to, 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 to yeah. govern well. Mm -hmm. And with that, we conclude this edition of uh, the program. I know when a thing like this comes up, it's very passionate. <laughs> we'll still have time to talk about it some other time. Mm -hmm. Have a good day and stay on with CRTV if you can. Same time next week we'll be on. Parents, the parents uh, who send their kids to school and the parents who didn't send their, school, their kids to school, not to disrupt the process that was ongoing in giving the kids the knowledge. I was a victim and I went to school. We were in a class of about 50, senior six old boys. The neighboring school had the same number. And when the, 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 the crisis reached its peak, we collapsed from 100 and something kids <coughs> to about 20 something, right? But we, those of us who could go went. The good thing about it is that we covered the syllables. But the bad thing with this is that we are organizing an, uh, um, an examination. An examination on a syllables whose coverage is put in doubt. I think that is the most fundamental thing. And I'm wondering whether we are not deceiving these young men, whether their certificates will be respected abroad. Uh, th that's, that's another question, but the point here is that the, the minister has indicated that they've taken a series of measures and that the students were supposed to read ahead. They know what they're supposed to cover and uh, maybe compare notes with those who, who were working. Joe, if yes, I, if I may, uh, I'll, I'll give you. Uh, uh -huh. um, we are in, a, in, in an education system that is national in nature. Part of the country, the syllabus might not have been covered. And in another part of the country, the syllabus was covered because it's okay. English speaking uh, English, English, English schools in, yeah. in, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the in the eight regions. Mm -hmm. They were going to school. So the dilemma here is: Would you sacrifice those who were going to school who covered the syllabus and promote, or about, would you also abandon? those who did not go to school. I think, humbly, that those who weren't going to school could have been given the opportunity to catch up. How? The students were at home. Why did they not push the academic year later? They were not, go they were not going to school. It might have been considered a holiday. Why couldn't the academic year be pushed, let's say, to August? Okay, that's another mm -hmm. question yeah, because um, yeah, to, to cover the we, syllabus. we 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 will be we'll talking go, about we'll the build up to the 2018 mm -hmm. academic year, mm -hmm. and so there are still question marks okay. uh, and uh, around that. So I just wanted us to talk about uh, the, the the examinations, the written part of the examinations expected tomorrow. Uh, uh, Stephen hasn't said anything on the you on the exams. Yeah, I just wanted to say that the <coughs> we understand the the. The, 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 the government's position, just like we understand the position of uh, the students. Uh, the, the worry I have is that, as somebody who had written the GC before, I understand that to see the GC, you must be psychologically prepared. You should be morally prepared, and you should be academically prepared for the, for the exam. There are times you see some your, your friends really frightened entering the GC hall. For students who have not been to school for seven months, are you sure they have this preparedness, psychological preparedness to sit for mm. an end of course exam like the GC? Take for instance the GC A levels with all the hurdles. You think that somebody who has a mathematics or physics student who has not done practicals for seven months will go and do physics practicals in the GC A levels? For someone like me who did it, I don't think it is, it is feasible.
Good day. There was much in the news this week with the meeting of uh, the supreme body of the country's uh, magistracy at Unity Palace. There was also a series of uh, audiences which the President of the Republic granted at Unity Palace. But the back in the neighborhoods so or in our towns, news again came down from the northwest and came up from the southwest as church leaders were taken to court this week and the, the case was postponed. Ojon Stevens, the publisher of the media newspaper, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. That um, uh, cherished Professor Emeritus Nkui, or Paul Nkui, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice which you made by traveling all the way from Bamenda to be with us on the program this midday. That's uh, our own Tewi Lambif, you're welcome. Thank you, James. And of course, um, uh, one which who will, <laughs> you, you get him up at midnight, he's prepared to respond. <laughs> to our request, and I'm referring to Professor Elvis Ngolengole. You're welcome also. Great pleasure, always. And uh, I'd like us to set the ball rolling with uh, a review of what the papers were feeding on this week. Our president, <coughs> Larry Efande. The head of state president, Paul Beer, was at the forefront of a number of activities this week. Notably, the audiences at the Unity Palace, the much-awaited higher judicial council which led to mass movements and appointments. But these didn't eclipse the running story, which has been feeding the press for over six months, the Anglophone crisis, plus the death of veteran sports journalist Zachary Nkwo, all this animated the papers this week. Let's begin by reading through the National Bilingual Daily Cameroon Tribune Wednesday. It captures that two audiences at the Unity Palace, notably the CEO of Electricity de France, Jean Bernard Levy. The paper says the national project was the center of talks between the two while the transfer of technologies to young Cameroonians came to play when the vice president of Huawei Group, Lee Dafen, met same Wednesday with President Beer. A day before the paper reports on the partnership for security and the fight against maritime piracy along the Gulf of Guinea was the focus of Russian ambassador Nikolai Ratsiborinsky's visit to the Unity Palace. Well, it finally held the much-awaited ordinary session of the Higher Judicial Council. The supreme body which handles the careers of magistrates and higher judicial officials, Cameron Tribune Thursday writes, the body examined seven disciplinary cases, an examination which led to the integration, the promotion and transfer of magistrates. The Guardian Post dedicated its Friday's edition to the entire text. The Anglophone crisis featured strongly on the papers this week. The Guardian Post Wednesday says over 70 detainees at the Yaoundé Central Prison arrested in the wake of the ongoing Anglophone crisis have embarked on an indefinite hunger strike. A decision which read over the countenance of Mancho Bibixi in court Wednesday, the paper says. Meantime, the court rejected an application requesting the detained leaders to be released and placed under judicial supervision, the paper adds. This as a son of the detained Advocate General of the Supreme Court, Justice Ayapola Bine, was on June 7 arrested at the premises of the Yaoundé Military Tribunal. There was some print media space for the church this week. Church leaders in the northwest and southwest regions were expected in court Monday. The Garden Post tears their reports on the huge Christian turnout at the court, despite security presence. The paper, like the Rambler, the Horizon, picture up the moderate of the piece to see shed tears while addressing the Christians in both. Okay, so, uh, but, uh, but like they, they, like they have been doing it all the same. Out. That is where the, the, the problem lies. But we also understand government's position because it is the duty of government to make sure the uh, citizens are educated because education is a fundamental human right. Mm -hmm. So that is the position of government. Mm -hmm. But this worries uh, is where, the, where the dilemma lies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I tried in vain to get um, the GC board and also to get a trade unionist. Uh, the teachers trade union come so we talk about it but I'll still make frantic efforts to be able to get them talk I about it. I hear that you can register in Bamenda for a certain Bamenda and write in your own day. I don't know how that's going to be workable. Those are decisions that were taken because of the exceptional circumstances. Right. No, yeah. but we should not sacrifice mm. the quality of education. We will, we will, we will get the GC board. <laughs> Uh, we'll get a representative of the board and of the ministry and the trade unionists come and answer questions on this DCE board, on this particular 2017 I'm told edition that when the of the Minister of Education 
brought out some of these uh, measures to the, the GC Board Register raised some uh, reservations. Right? No, uh, that, those are suppositions. We will get the GC Board to answer those questions you, uh, within the next couple of, uh, of weeks here on the program. Yeah, yeah. What we should agree here is that, I mean, we are living in exceptional circumstances, and exceptional circumstances call for exceptional measures. Uh, this is like what you refer to as a new norm. We, the government, as the organizer, the manager, and the promoter of national education, has that regalian duty. Okay. It will encourage and give education a chance. Okay. And we shall see whether our young people will be up to the task. Okay. Uh, I, I think that teachers, one of the joys of a teacher, and a good number of teachers here, is to say that, to see their students succeed. Succeed. Okay. Uh, All right. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. That's a running story. And one of the fallouts of uh, the ongoing Anglophone crisis has been the dragging of uh, church officials to court. And with uh, them being in court, it has raised a number of questions. And one of them which we want to answer today is the issue between the church and the state, church and politics. Let's have the speaker on what happened in Bermuda and Boya this week. Curious onlookers among whom members of Christian movements and associations crowd around Bamenda's Magistrate Court No. 1. The first session is the case between the consortium of parents with children in Christian mission schools in the Northwest and the Catholic Church with some of its school principals. The second court session pits the same consortium against the Cameron Baptist Convention. Members of the consortium of parents were all absent, just like their representative, Barrister Julius Achu, and they have brought seven count charges against the church, amongst which are failure to ask parents to send children back to school, collecting money as fees from parents while refusing to teach and accommodate children, failure to cause payment of salaries to mission school teachers, thus depriving the state of necessary tax deductions. The court has ordered the civil party to pay a deposit and register the direct summons before next session to hold on Monday, July 24, 2017. The three complainants representing a consortium of parents whose children were enrolled in Catholic colleges in the southwest region for the 2016-2017 school year were all absent in court just like complainants of another consortium for parents with children in colleges of the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon. Although the presiding judge, Magistrate Tuba Beatrice of the Boyacoro First Instance, took notice of the late arrival of one of the lawyers representing complainants against the Catholic Church, she did not bow down. The Rambler intimated a change of rostrum for the clerics as it banners it as bishop in the dark. It went ahead to say the consortium of parents avoids the bishop's trial. The garden post on this center spread captures the drama in pictures. We read some more about the church. The Voice newspaper talks about the death of three Catholic priests in three weeks. Reporting on the death of Bishop Benoit Bala, the Horizon newspaper says police rule out suicide after remains of the prelate was pulled out of the Sanaga River. Quoting a similar police investigation, the Garden Post Monday says the bishop might have been assassinated. The announced death of a sports journalist, Zachary Nko, runs from the post through the Guardian Post and the media newspapers. Most of these papers write on the sports legacy of the man who quit live stage at 69. And finally, the ordinary and advanced levels of the GC examination begins tomorrow, Monday. Well, that ends our first review. I'll come your way again next week. God willing. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Larry. I'd like us to begin with um, this match of yesterday, which the press uh, could not capture. Um, the Lions, um, or I'll put it this way Hogo Bruce gambled and won again. No, uh, I, I don't think he gambled. He has, when he came, we, we, he had not proven his method, but now we're beginning to see that uh, he is worth the trouble. He's a good coach. We see a Lions team that is very cohesive, even though they lack, they're a bit lacking uh, up front.
But at the defense, they are formidable. At the, de at the midfield, they are formidable. I think with time, we'll have a very wonderful team. I think he's doing a good job. We cannot say he was gone. He gambled. Okay. Yeah. I'd like us to end that one at that level and move on to Prof, who is coming all the way from Bermuda. How would you assess the uh, readiness or the build-up to the General Certificate of Education examinations beginning Monday? <laughs> I think I'm, that's, uh, I'm the wrong person to respond to that kind of a question. Okay. I was asking because you are from Bermuda, maybe. Simply, uh, well... <laughs> Given the fact that um, we are on the sidelines, because we have not been teaching, and those going on to do the GCE were probably students not taught by us. And if I say us, I mean those of us who, have the, who are teachers and who have not been active in the transmission of knowledge. Some virtually I can say 80% of our schools were, were closed, were not active. But the students have decided to meet the challenge, all the same. Well, there are a few students who continue to go to school and um, probably is for it is for those that the GCE board is organizing this exam, which I feel is not worth the salt. Okay, Tewi. Um, government says all the measures have been taken, including the GCE board, um, and the accounting on the goodwill of everybody who wants to take the exams to go there. Well, well government may have taken all the necessary measures, but I still think there is a problem of security. When I look at the incident that happened in Bermuda last week, where a young student's arm was cut, then I begin to ask myself, where is the security? It wasn't within the school compound, but besides the school compound, in the bush somewhere. Mm -hmm. When you take care of students, mm -hmm. you don't Children. only ensure the security of uh, otherwise schools will just be buildings. It is taking into consideration the security of all the stakeholders, of <coughs> all those involved in education. Mm. Protecting the students is <coughs> very important. And, uh, and I don't think the protection of students begins and ends within the school premises. So when there, when there are incidents like this, we begin to wonder whether the security can really be said to be effective. Now, would the, would the, one would ask the question, Prof, would the threats and so on coming on the social media and government uh, assuring uh, the, the students, uh, like I was asking Tewi, and uh, how would you put that side by side, would, uh, given the incident which Tewi has just mentioned and uh, the very fact that uh, uh, the government uh, says that it should go ahead. Yeah, the government is within its uh, regalian duty to to manage, to organize and manage uh, education in the country. Uh, the challenges notwithstanding, I, I understand uh, the security challenges and uh, the challenge that, uh, as uh, Prof. My elder brother said earlier. Uh, a lot of the schools were not open, and uh, but as we say, what we we learn from this the the, 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 the crisis in the two um, English speaking uh, regions is that at least the young people, the mm -hmm. students, took the challenge and said uh, we want to go to some, mm -hmm. we want to go to school, we want to have an education, and in spite of the problems. We're going to take the risks and we're going to take on those challenges. And the government, in its regalian duty, has supported, has encouraged, and has put in place the right, or what it considers the right security and other infrastructure to ensure that these students who have taken up that challenge don't get disappointed. As to how they will perform, of course, we watch and we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see but that nevertheless, uh, the sec security is a challenge. And the fact that uh, a good number uh, wasn't going to school is another challenge. Now, 
perhaps uh, there is a genius in, in some Cameroonian students. We'll see. Uh, as they say, possibly never Cameroonians. But we think that lots of the students and some of the teachers uh, uh, took the challenge and uh, they were doing classes in maybe unorthodox, private or informal ways. And uh, we have to say that in our moral duty as citizens to encourage the younger people and young people to grow up and be like us, we have to feel sorry and hope that uh, things will be better. Let these students learn and go to school because they are the leaders of tomorrow and they cannot lead without knowledge. They cannot lead without uh, certificates. We hope that uh, uh, the certificates uh, will reflect the knowledge that they acquired through formal or informal uh, uh, yes, settings. Okay. Um, let, um, let me interject there because um, uh, ghost down for school is not new as far as I'm concerned. Because in 58, we declared ghost down for schools. In 1958? 58, I was in Sinatra 6. It lasted for a couple of days and the schools were open. Some of us were able to go back to school. But the security we had was the willingness of our